Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kid Lit Joy, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Younger Reader category for this Children's Book Council Award shortlist for 2024. This is the second video in this series for this year. This is where I review the books that have been shortlisted for our annual Children's Book Awards. This is kind of the biggest award category for children's books in Australia at the moment, and I really enjoy going through the things that have made the final shortlist. So there are six books in all of the categories, and today we're going to be looking at the Younger Readers, which is the equivalent of middle fiction or middle grade fiction. So I have all of the books here. Before we begin, I'm going to read you the category description. So I'm just going to look at a screen while I read it. So I get it right. And it says entries in this category may be fiction, drama or poetry and should be appropriate in style and content for readers from the middle to upper primary years. So from seven to 12 years of age. So it's quite a broad category. It does include some junior fiction. And then there is a note that says some of the titles in this category might only be suitable for readers who are in the upper primary years. I can attest to that as they contain mature themes, including violence. Parental guidance is recommended. And I actually really like that they have that warning in here because in the past there have been some really really dark heavy themes in these books. So just as I did in my video last week I am going to go from my least favorite book in the category all the way to my favorite one that I hope wins and as I said in that video it's not that these are the my least favorite is a bad book it's just that it of the books in this list it's the one that I didn't enjoy as much. Also I am very much aware that I am not reviewing this either as a middle fiction reader or as a judge who has a certain criteria. So there are books in here that I think will probably win that are not at the top of my list. So the first book I'm going to talk about is Real Pigeons Flap Out by Andrew McDonald and Ben Wood and this one is much more of a junior fiction rather than middle fiction sort of story. It's definitely for that seven, eight, nine age category and it is really fun. It's a very funny story. The real pigeons are a group of pigeons that work together to fight crime and I have read other books in this series and I really enjoy it. It certainly does deal with a lot of really important themes for younger readers. I think the strongest themes that come through in the real pigeon series are friendship and sticking together and working together teamwork and being brave in the face of something uncertain. So I, as I said I do actually really enjoy this series but it just compared to some of the other books in this in this list. Yeah, I had a, I had a question mark around it. Then there is The Sideways Orbit of Evie Hart by Samira Camaldean. This one is the last book I actually read in this list and I really enjoyed it. It is definitely for older readers. It is about Evie who is a young girl. She goes to school, she's in year six, and she and her class are studying space. Evie is dealing with some bullying from another girl in the class who makes fun of Evie because she has ticks or twitches with her eyes and she also pushes Evie's buttons because Evie is a rule follower. She likes things to be ordered and just so and this other girl calls out, makes a fuss etc and it just it, it really gets under Evie's skin. And all of this is amplified because Evie's family is going through some changes. Her mum and her stepdad are separating and her stepdad is the only father that she's known since she was four years old. Obviously this is quite traumatic and links are made between what they're learning at school about about space and the universe and also Evie's family life. It is very much a growing up and coming of age kind of story and it is lovely but I felt that the ending for me was a little bit abrupt and yes it's definitely open for people to interpret what happens next but I think I would have liked one more chapter that sort of just gave a bit more closure to the story. Then there is Being Jimmy Baxter by Fiona Lloyd which is another book that I really loved but this is where you do need to adhere to the content warning for violence. Jimmy and his mum are basically on the run from their fa from Jimmy's father who is very violent towards the both of them and they end up in this very small town and Jimmy tries to go to school but he's a quite a quirky kid. He doesn't quite fit in. He finds that it's not a place he really wants to be. Meanwhile his mum is dealing with quite a heavy depressive episode. So much so that she can barely get out of bed and they don't have enough food and things like that. And so Jimmy instead of going to school goes around town and gets various jobs to earn some money and to get food. And the town recognizing, obviously recognizing that something is not quite right, allow him to do this because they want to make sure that he is okay. Jimmy also meets a local man from town who is living in an abandoned barn and his name is Mac. And the two of them connect about stories because they both feel like they're outcast and separate from everyone else in the town, but they actually help each other along the way. And there is a connection between Mac and Jimmy that at first, they don't realize and it is honestly a gorgeous little story but it does deal with some quite heavy themes and there are times where Jimmy's dad does come back and is a big loud violent presence in the book so just be aware of that. Then there is Scar Town by Tristan Banks. This one is again is for older readers on that middle grade spectrum. This is about a group of friends who live in a town that has a dam and so part of the old part of town has flooded and so they live in the part of town that's okay and they spend a lot of time 
looking at and exploring the old town even though they've been told not to go there. One day they end up deciding to swim across some of the floodwaters into one of the abandoned houses and in there they find a skeleton in the walls and thousands of dollars in cash and this sets off a chain reaction through the town as someone figures out what they have found, things get quite dangerous and they have to try and figure out who does the cash belong to and who is the body in the walls, particularly when there has been in the past a strange set of disappearances, including one of the main characters, Father. And it was fast paced and at times really creepy. It reads very much like a thriller, but for middle fiction readers. And I liked the atmosphere that we had in this story. Then there is Huda Was Here by H. Hayek, which I read and reviewed last year when it first came out. I absolutely love this series. This is the second book in a series and it follows two siblings. Our protagonist is the brother and he is telling all of the adventures and hijinks that they get up to because of his sister, Huda. In this book, their father loses his job as the sort of local community security guard and he has to move somewhere else to work so that he, they can still earn money. And Huda takes umbrage at this and convinces Hakil that the two of them need to embark on a mini crime spree in order to prove to the community that they need their dad back as a security guard. And it is fun and hilarious. There is so much humor in here and so much heart. It's also got a great community atmosphere as well. And Huda is just one of my favorite precocious characters in middle fiction. And then finally, the book that I just absolutely fell in love when I read it was Scout and the Rescue Dogs by Diane Wolfer. And this one is about Scout who goes to boarding school and at the start of this book is picked up by her dad who is a truck driver and he drives a lot he drives big rigs and long haul truck trips. So that's why she's at boarding school. Her mother has passed away I think in the past year. And so for obvious reasons, she's had to she's had to go to boarding school and she hates it but it's Christmas time, it's school holidays. He picks her up and they are on a mission to deliver a huge amount of dog food that has been donated to various animal shelters around Victoria and New South Wales. They set off on this adventure and Scout is inspired by all of the dogs that she meets along the way to try and help them. And she comes up with a plan to try and connect these dogs with truck drivers who might like a truck dog because all of these animals have either been abandoned or are in desperate need of new homes. And so she does this with a friend from the boarding school and her dad and the shelter workers. And it's just a very heartwarming kind of story. And then amidst all of this, it is also bushfire season. And so that has a huge impact. And what I, I just loved that we got to see this community of truck drivers and the way that they are family and the way that they help each other out and how also Scout and dad are dealing with the the grief and loss of Scout's mother and not being together all of the time. Like it was just such a beautiful read. It was emotional without being over the top. And it's definitely something that you could read in year two or year three or year four as a class novel. And there's so much to talk about in here and is just, oh, it's such a gorgeous book. So those are my reviews. What do I think would actually win? Like I would really like Scout and the Rescue Dogs to win or even Hooda was here. But I have a feeling it will probably either be The Sideways Orbit of Evie Hart or being Jimmy Baxter, and just for the themes and the content that explores. But yeah, like I said, they're all good books. Like I enjoyed reading all of them, but I just got so much joy out of reading Scout and the Rescue Dogs. I just thought it was so, such a beautiful book. So in the description, I will leave links to where you can find out more information about these books. If you've read them, feel free to let me know in the comments. Otherwise, feel free to leave a dog emoji down below to let me know that you're here. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everyone.